Nearly 66 million Americans voted for a future where there are no ceilings on our dreams. And afterwards, we refused to give up on America. Millions marched, many ran for office. We kept our eyes on the future. Well, my friends, the future is here. I wish my mother and Kamala's mother could see us. They would say, keep going. Shirley and Jerry would say, keep going. That was former Secretary of State and 2016 Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton at last month's Democratic National Convention referencing political trailblazers Shirley Chisholm and Geraldine Ferraro. Clinton writes about her own journey in American politics in her new book entitled Something Lost, Something Gained, Reflections on Life, Love, and liberty. And Secretary Clinton joins us now. It is great to have you on the show. Congratulations on this book. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. <laughs> Madam Secretary, first of all, any book that borrows a line exactly. from both sides now with Joni Mitchell, Ed, that's a good book. I, 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 I know already. But, um, you know, I, I actually, I, I read something in the book, and, you know, instead of starting on politics or foreign policy. I want to start on the book because it reminds me, something I read reminds me the first time I met you and uh, President Clinton and everybody else uh, at, at the White House picnic. And of course, we all ran against you. Hillary's a Marxist, <laughs> Bill's a Marxist, everybody's a Marxist. And after, after the picnic, uh, I, was, I was asked by a conservative radio show to come on and talk about how horrible you all were. They said, well, what do you think about the president? I was like, ah, breathed fire. What do you think about what do you think about the vice president? Bah, breathe fire. And then they go, and then they laugh again. What do you think about Hillary? I go, she's a Midwest Methodist. Their heads all exploded. I said, you want me to tell you the truth? She's a Midwest Methodist. That's what I saw in talking to her. Not a Marxist, a Midwest Methodist. And then I saw this in your book. You're reticent about talking about your faith, but you say, my faith has sustained me informed me, saved me. I don't know who I would be or where I would have ended up without it. And you know, isn't it crazy? Even with all the political divide and all the differences, that came through in you for people who really know you, and I only met you that for three minutes, <laughs> but that faith, that came through even then. Wow, Joe, that's an amazing um, memory. And I used to love those um, White House picnics and Christmas parties because at least for a couple of hours, everybody was talking to each other and having fun together uh, before they went back to their corners. And, you know, I write about my faith, my family, my friends, obviously my politics uh, in this uh, new book. Uh, because I do think we've got to start looking at people as, as, as the whole beings that we are. And certainly my faith, as I say, has been um, critical. It's been key to who I am, uh, how I think about my life, the kind of service that I believe in. And I really appreciate uh, the old memory that you just shared. Yeah, it, it really, uh, it's always been disconcerting to my conservative friends how much I, I, <laughs> I loved you from the start. Um, to, I, I, we, we have, we've noticed, uh, Mick and I, you have an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of energy. And uh, <laughs> we, both were, we both were really taken by your take on aging, which you say borrows a lot from Jane Fonda. Yeah. Look, I, I am a big believer that... Um, get up every day and live a life of 
joy, purpose, uh, reaching out, spending time with people. And I always, you know, Jane Fonda looks amazing. I just saw a picture of her knocking on doors for <laughs> uh, the Harris Waltz campaign and, you know, just literally delighting people who came to the door and there she was. And so she is an inspiration to me. And I really like the idea that you just keep going. You go from strength to strength. You're not the same person you were in your 20s, 40s, 60s. You're different, but you have yeah. an attitude um, that is built on everything that came before. And if you take care of yourself and you bring some gratitude and joy into your life every day, you have all kinds of uh, you know, good years ahead of you. So a quote from Hillary Clinton in this book on aging, it's prophetic. Um, I don't feel old. <laughs> um, and I love that because um, you keep going and you're doing all these different things from producing to uh, you name it. Um, when you were younger, did you, when you were in your 20s, did you imagine having massive impact on the world over the age of 50, say? I really didn't, Mika. I mean, you know, I had a very... Um, you know, clear idea about what I wanted to do, which was largely begun when I worked for the Children's Defense Fund to, you know, help and support uh, children, particularly abused, neglected, children with disabilities, kids in trouble. You know, that was my motivation and in large measure because I think I was inspired by my mother and I, I write again about her because she is like with me, uh, literally uh, every day, and I wanted to help people. I mean, it, and, and in the chapter on faith, you know, I quote the old John Wesley um, saying, you know, do all the good you can, and that's how I was raised, that's what I learned in my home, that's what I learned in my church, um, that's what my best teachers when I was growing up uh, expected of uh, me and uh, the other kids. So. It was a different time, uh, and I, I miss it to some extent. I miss the idea that, you know, ch children deserve our support, but they also need to be given a chance to do something for other people. Uh, and as you know from the book, I write about how kids are now so obsessed and addicted to screens that they're missing out on a lot of the day-to-day -day interaction uh, that uh, helps make you who you are as a person.